my topic is burden of heart failure diabetes what is then as well as treat as as you all global burden of heart failure on the rise mortality 30 days Thirty days mortality is around two to percent, while the five-year mortality is high as fifty to seventy-five percent. Heart failure leads to persistent hospitalization. Eighty-three percent heart failure patients are hospitalized at least once, and forty-three percent hospitalized at least times. Length of stay of, of uh, for the heart failure hospitalization is around about eight days, and hospitalization for heart failure is a react reflection of the clinic. as well as the predictor of poor subsequent outcome heart failure is a bigger challenge in india the current estimates about incidence of heart failure around 1.3 then then heart failure patients are different they are more younger one out of three patients are readmitted in india and one third of the heart failure patients die within one year due to their active life years this is from the from the velor heart failure registry 42% of the patients are admitted readmitted for the heart failure and 27.3% of the patient hospitalized for heart failure die in a month this is from the velor heart failure registry yeah european society of cardiology in 2016 defined heart failure as a, as a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction that is half ref ejection fraction less than 40% heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction 40 to 49 percent heart failure with preserved ejection fraction if is more than 50 percent of course with all the categories signs of heart failure coming to diabetes in and heart failure as all of you know very well the diabetes is already included as stage a heart failure criteria patients with diabetes the prevalence of heart failure is between 9 to 20 percent four times higher than the general population the prevalence is even higher patients with diabetes for observational studies have shown a two to four fold increase in the risk of heart failure in diabetes compared with those without diabetes and these are the pathophysiological mechanisms diabetes oxidative stress to inflammation increase in the aga the advanced glycation and products cardiac fibrosis autonomic small vessel disease and altered calcium Healing ultimately leads to left ventricular hypertrophy, and that leads to heart failure. Third ejection fraction on one side, and heart failure with the left ventricular dysfunction, heart failure with ejection fraction on other side. More clear, the diabetes with hyperglycemia and insulin resistance, inflammation, dyslipidemia, and endothelial dysfunction lead to heart disease, and ultimately cardiomyopathy. While on other side. the left ventricular hypertrophy ras activation increased calcium handling autonomic dysfunction fibrosis diabetic cardiomyopathy without any coronary event ultimate heart failure mortality in half ref remains high despite the introduction of therapies that improve survival as ac inhibitors reduce the mortality by 16% in the sol trial beta blockers reduce mortality by 34% in the this trial by the mra reduce mortality by 30% and arb by 70 residual risk is still there and 50% of the patient they die within 5 years of the diagnosis the reduced risk is still persist even after adding arni with the blockbuster molecule in heart failure paradigm hf trial the arni reduced the mortality is to 20% benefit with arni when compared to ac inhibitor here also residual risk is there and therefore there is an urgent need for the prevention of heart failure in individuals there is as well as early recognition to facilitate the treatment before hospitalization i mean first issue that is prevention of heart failure in diabetes and i, I already shown the link between diabetes and the heart failure the drugs which have been used in diabetes like sulfonylurea thiazolamine dion d4 inhibitors some and uh, even the glp1 receptor agonist they are actually acting through the insulin insulin they have insulin mediated action and that leads to insulin mediated renal sodium ret sodium retention leading to increased propensity for the fluid retention and ultimately heart failure 
while the SGLT2 inhibitor is the new molecule fitting the NH3 and thus inhibition of the proximal tubular sodium reabsorption, less propensity for the fluid retention, less chances of heart failure. Clinical trials of SGLT2 inhibitors in diabetes have changed the landscape for both prevention as well as treatment of heart failure. And here are the trials in diabetic patients, declared me 50 k trial with dapagliflozin, reduced the heart failure hospitalization by 27%, Canvas trial with canagliflozin reduced by 33%, and Empire trial in empagliflozin reduced by 35%, and Creden trial again with the canagliflozin reduced heart failure hospitalization by 39%. SGLT2 inhibitors may prevent heart failure in a broad range of persons with or without cardiovascular disease. And this is a slide showing the several mechanisms responsible for its beneficial effect in heart failure. But more clearly, apart from the natriuresis, diuresis, reduction in interstitial edema, reduction in the preload and afterload, reduction in left ventricular wall stress, improved renal function and cardio renal physiology, inhibition of the cardiac sodium hydrogen exchange. Cardiac bioenergistic are the main mechanism responsible for uh, reduction in heart failure by age. Based on those data, those data from these trials, 2016 ESC guideline clearly endorsed empagliflozin as a of choice in patients with uh, patients who are diabetic for the prevention or the delayed the onset of heart failure. That is class two level B recommendation. But this endorsement is actually based on the Empire Act trial, which was done in 20, the results appeared in 2015. But later on, we had Canvas trial in 2017 and declared TME58 with canagliflozin in 2018. And based on the results of these trials also, we have seen the revised guideline in 2022 by ACC and AHA, and that endorsed all SGLT2 inhibitors as a class one level A recommendation. Uh, in diabetic patients for the of heart failure. Now coming to the next issue that is treatment of heart failure with SGLT2 inhibitors. After the promising results from the cardiovascular outcome trial which I already shown to you earlier, SGLT2 inhibitor then tried in the patient with established or chronic heart failure with or without diabetes. Now first I will take uh, SGLT2 inhibitor in chronic half rare patients, injection fraction less than 40% and we had two dedicated heart failure trials APA HF trial and Emperor reduced trial, heart failure with rejection fraction. And both the trials clearly showed the benefit. 2029, the DAPA HF trial clearly showed a worsening reduction in worsening of heart failure or cardiovascular death by 26%, heart failure hospitalization by 30%, cardiovascular death by 18%, and total heart failure hospitalization and cardiovascular death by 25%. While in 2020, we had Emperor reduced trial, uh, it was presented in EAC Congress. Heart failure hospitalization, cardiovascular death reduced by 25 percent. First, and the recurrent heart failure hospitalization by 30 percent, and also having a renal benefit by 50 percent relative risk reduction with the drug. Both the trials consistently reduce the risk of cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization regardless of the type of diabetes. And based on these data, in 21, the ESC Congress clearly, clearly endorsed in their guideline dapagliflozin or empagliflozin are recommended as a Patients with HFREF, the risk of heart failure hospitalization and death, class 1 level A recommendation. And subsequently, 2020 AHAC guideline also endorsed the same class 1 level A recommendation in, in those patients, high HFR, dedicated HFREF patients, importance of AGL. Next issue is AGL2 inhibitor, acute heart failure and worsening of heart failure. And we had a temporary response trial in 20. Clearly showed the benefit reduction in worsening of heart failure at 30 days, at 60 days, and also uh, heart failure hospitalization and cardiovascular death. 2021, we had another trial, the impulse trial, that is with empagliflozin, acute heart failure. And here, there was in hospital initiation of the empagliflozin patients with 72 hours of the hospitalization. And looking at the primary endpoints of the clinical benefit evaluated with the ratio, with the win ratio. Based on the composite of death, number of heart failure events, time to first heart failure event, and change in consistency cardiomyopathy score at the quality of life, and see the results. All cause mortality as well as heart failure events are 
significantly reduced as compared to placebo. Also having, we are also having an ongoing trial with acute heart failure, that is DAPA HFK trial. And this trial, the primary composite, primary endpoint of this trial is time to the first occurrence of cardiovascular death or worsening of heart failure. Next is HGL2 inhibitor in acute worsening of heart failure. And we had the solo trial that is with the sotagliflozin, not only HGL2 inhibitor but also HGL2. And that also showed the reduction in the primary point of cardiovascular death, heart failure, hospitalization, and urgent heart failure by 33%. And we have seen the results very early within 8 days. Secondary endpoint of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization by 32%. So, ashwamegh of HGLT2 inhibitor not stopped here. We have seen the benefit in chronic half rep patients. We have seen benefit in AHF. We have also seen in patients with worsening heart failure. Next destination is. I have F, heart failure with preserved resistance, where no pharmacotherapy was found to be effective up till now. And then it has been tried in HFP patients. First trial was the emperor preserved with empagliflozin by Stephen Anker. And uh, looking at the primary composite endpoint of the time to first and first event uh, of the adjudicated cardiovascular death or adjudicated heart failure hospitalization. Confirmation of the key secondary endpoint of the first and educated heart failure hospitalization and also look points and see the result. The primary endpoint of composite of cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization by 21% and the secondary endpoint of the total first and the recurrent heart failure hospitalization by 27%. Also had another trial in 2021 by Cosibo Road, the preserved HF trial is looking only at the quality of life only and with, with the Kansas City cardiomyopathy score which is improved by 5.8 5.8 points and 6 minute walk rest is also improved 21 around 20 years and then we had a long awaited delivered trial in HEPA patient with dapagliflozin was presented by Doc Solomon in Barcelona conference so incidentally I was also there then in the hall when it was presented Deliver baseline, and you can see here that diabetic patients, 44, 44.7% of the patients in this trial was diabetic. Primary endpoint of cardiovascular death or worsening heart failure reduced by 18%. Composite of primary endpoint cardiovascular death particularly reduced by 12%. And secondary endpoint of total heart failure events and cardiovascular death by 23%. Quite robust. And, and secondary endpoint of the improvement in the quality of life also based on the Ansacetic cardiomyopathy score. So now we have a drug which is shown the benefit in heart failure third injection patient, a ray of hope for those patients who are having heart failure. The mechanism of benefit in HEF, the anti-inflammatory effect, antioxidant effect, increase in nitric oxide bioavailability, fibrosis, hypertrophy, ultimate function. Based on these data, there is a new recommendation by the, by the ACC AHA in HEPA patients. HGL2 inhibitor is considered class 2A recommendation, while all others, MRA, beta blockers, and others, class 2B recommendation, while class 2A recommendation for HGL2. What about the patients with a mild reduction infection, having infection infection 20, 41 to 49%? It's already been endorsed in the deliver trial. And not only have pair patients, but the mildly reduced also included in this trial. More than 2,000 patients were diabetic, and you can clearly see a reduction in the forest plus clearly cardiovascular events. And based on this data, guideline also endorsed the AGL2 inhibitor as a class 2 one a recommendation in mildly reduced infection also. Lastly, patients with Ejection fraction that is, those patients who had ejection 40 now improved to more than 40, and the guideline also endorsed that for the benefit. And the SEC guideline clearly says all the drugs which have been used not to be stopped when you come to the ejection fraction, drugs not to be stopped there. So, the journey of AGL to inhibitor has not stopped here. Why? Because they'll mange more from AGL, and therefore, the researchers. Such as that they are trying SGLT2 inhibitor in acute myocardial infarction. Why in acute myocardial infarction? Because 
it is estimated that 12 to 15% of the patient with MI will be hospitalized with heart failure in the year following their myocard infarction and the presence of heart failure symptoms at the time of MI has been identified as the single most powerful predictor of mortality. Significant proportion of the patient with heart failure symptoms immediately post MI have preserved rejection fraction where HDL2 inhibitors are the only drug to date and efficacy. Well, evidences are coming from ME trial the presented in last year Congress. Not only reduction in the NT-PRO BNP by 15%, but improvement in the ejection fraction also. Reduction in the EPAM ratio, reduction in the left ventricular end systolic volume as well as end diastolic volume. And we also having ongoing trials, the DAPA MI trial, more than 6,000 patients, and MPEC MI trial, more than 3,000 patients. These trials will inform the clinical regarding the role of age patients after acute myocardial infarction with a high risk for development of heart failure and mortality. So, take home at the end, there is a, subs there is a substantial unmet need for prevention of heart failure in diabetes by early recognition of individual risk. There is an unmet need for the adherence to the guidelines, the respect to the UMTOP practitioner of the evidence based therapies <coughs> among the patients with diabetes disease, and there is an unmet need for the additional effective cell tolerated therapeutic options. SGL2 inhibitors have emerged as a potential effect to class of drugs for the prevention, not only for prevention of heart failure, but also hold promise for the heart treatment of heart failure in patients. And so the question prevention to treatment of heart failure, whether SGL2 inhibitor covers it all, the answer is yes. Right from prevention, we have data also, and we have enough data in favor of SGL2 inhibitors. Thank you very much. Salute to all these investigators for the HLT2 trials in heart failure.